Hey, what's up everyone? So it's Friday evening. It's a twilight live performance by Robbie Fishing. <laughs> I don't know whether I'd call it a live performance, but it's a Friday night live with Robbie. In this video, I want to talk to you live about my, uh, about my, my, how I do things. My creative process is probably the best way to put it. A lot of people ask me how I manage to upload so many videos. Some people ask me what I do for a job. And a lot of people assume that I don't work and that I just get Centrelink. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you my creative process, how I go about doing things, why am I able to upload so many videos, as well as still hold down a job and still have kids and have a family and stuff like that. So stay tuned. This video is going to have lots of information. No editing, straight off the bat, live from the top of the Warby Ranges with the sunset to the west over my shoulder. Isn't that just magnificent? Now, I'm getting lots of comments already. Thank you very much for uh, nothing wrong with Centrelink. That's exactly right, Broom Time. I do work. I'm not on Centrelink benefits. But I will say, if I was on Centrelink benefits, I often wonder, would that mean that I'm not allowed to go fishing? Does that mean I'm not entitled to go fishing? What if I was on a disability pension? Does that mean that I'm not allowed to enjoy my life? Those people that leave those comments are a little bit narrow-minded, I think. Now, I'm not going to read the comments too often because I want to talk. Maybe at the end I might be able to check a few comments. So, But I can see them coming through. Now, if I... Uh, if there's any wind noise or the audio or anything is really poor, let me know. I'll pull the cord and we'll do this again some other time. Now let's talk about my uh, let, let's talk about my creative process. How do I upload so many videos so often? There is so much to consider when I do this. There is my analytics, which I read a lot of. I look into my analytics a lot because I need to know who's watching my videos. When are they watching my videos? For example, the bulk of my viewers, the, the biggest group of viewers to watch my videos come from the uh, 25 to 35 year old age group. Following that is the 15 to 25 year old age group. So I've got lots of young people watching me. 90% of those people are male. So I've got a lot of young blokes watching me. And I suspect that of uh, the 10% that are female, a lot of them are young boys using their mum's phones. That's a guess that I'm making. So obviously I need to work around. When am I going to upload my video? When am I going to go live? When am I going to share it public? Obviously, Saturday night's not a good good idea. When I was a young bloke, Saturday nights, I was busy chasing skirt, not watching YouTube. When I was a young bloke, there wasn't YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, so I wanted to sort of work around my metrics. When's the best time to upload, etc., etc. So I try and upload of an evening. I try to set my videos public of an evening when people are home. There's no point me putting a video up and, and having it go public during school time because a lot, so many, so much of my audience are at school and they don't see it. Sometimes I do if I've got to go out and do something, I'll upload it and get going and, and come back to it later on. Sometimes I'll do it to try something different. But how does my creative process work? This is how it works. I work very hard to bring you guys as many videos as I can. I work very hard. Note the word work. When we think work, it sort of delivers a certain connotation, like we're breaking our back, working up a sweat, and we're getting financially remunerated. In other words, we're working hard for our paycheck. But work isn't always about getting paid. Arnold Schwarzenegger worked very hard to get himself big and buff and muscly, a bit like me. <laughs> My friend James Willett has worked very, very hard to just win an international clay bird shooting competition. You know, he loves it. He loves shooting clay birds. Arnold Schwarzenegger loves lifting weights. I love fishing and I love making videos. I love editing videos. I love uploading videos, but I still work very hard to be able to do that. Now, what I do, I, I batch film if I can. In other words, I'll film a few sessions in a row. For example, last week I had Wednesday off. Wednesday morning, I was up before the sun. I was up before the sun. I went out. I went out to El Dorado Dredge. I went fishing for a couple of hours. Then I'd done something. I'd done some filming during the day. I think I filmed about fishing rods breaking or something. Then I went out of an evening. I went fishing again with Holly and we caught a yellow belly. There's three videos in the one day that I can put out the following week, say Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So then if I get a chance Thursday, I'll go fishing and that might give me a fourth video for the week. And I try to aim for four or five videos a week. When I go fishing, I rarely go for a full day at a time. I rarely go for any really long period. The reason being because I'm busy. I'm either at work as a, uh, a disability support worker, a job that I love, 
or um, I've got kids to look after and I've got a few other things going on in my personal life. I've actually in the process of uh, enrolling to be a volunteer for an organisation. There's going to be more of that coming down the track. So I've got a lot on, but when I do get a full day, I'll go fishing. A good example, just recently you saw me go fishing at Lake Buffalo. I, um, I went fishing, then I went to take some landscape photos. The fishing was quiet. I thought I'll come back later. I actually went trout fishing instead. I got the camera gear ready. I saw a nice stream and I went and caught a few trout. So I went, I filmed the first half of my redfin session. I then went trout fishing and made a trout fishing video because I had a, a bit of good luck. I could have fished a stream and seen no trout, got no video, and that's fine. But I had a great session, so I was able to get a video out of it. Ended up getting two videos out of the one session. One day last year in September, I think it was October, I went up, I went trout fishing in one stream in the morning. I had a great run, I made a video, it was great fun. I then went over to a different stream in the afternoon. On the way over, I saw a great big brown snake and I stuck my GoPro on its face and it got all aggro and I got another video and that video has just amassed 33,000 views so far. And then I went fishing for trout in the afternoon and got another trout fishing video. Three videos in the one day. And then during the course of the next few nights, when you guys are all sitting on your bed or sitting on your couch with your feet up, eating a bowl of ice cream and watching your favourite movie, I'm editing videos. Some nights I'm up, especially in summer when I go cod fishing with Brett Corker a lot, I will go cod fishing with Brett. I won't get home until 9.30 or 10, have a quick tea, then start editing at half past 10, 11 o'clock, finish editing at 1 o'clock, half past 1 in the morning. Then I'll upload the video to YouTube and I'll set it to private so that nobody can see it. Then I'll go to bed at half past 1, 2 o'clock. Then I'll get up at 8 o'clock and go to work the next morning and do the repeat the day again. Work all day, come home, edit that night, and go fishing and whatever. So I keep very, very, very busy. But I love it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm loving the fact that Holly, and you all know Holly because she's been in so many of my videos, and she's also got her own channel. Let's give her a shout-out. Look up Holly Alexander. I'll put a link above now. I oh, know I won't. I can't because I'm live. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm loving the fact that Holly likes to come fishing with me more and more. I think that's fantastic because that enables me to go fishing often and still spend time with Holly. My other daughter, Sky, she likes to come out occasionally, but she's not much of a keen fisherman. So, folks, that is how this is my creative process. Let's start it from the start. When I get time, I'll go fishing. I won't go fishing for a whole day. Sometimes I will. You know, if I've got a big adventure coming up, I'll have a whole day to go fishing. But quite often I'll have a morning session and I'll have an evening session, and I'll film two videos in that day. That's quite standard. Sometimes I'll get a third session during the middle of the day, particularly in summer when the days are longer. Sometimes I'll, um, I'll just have the two sessions and I'll do family stuff during the day, or appointments or whatever. And then, But I'll try and do two at a time. Sometimes I'll get three. Sometimes I'll even get more if I'm lucky. It all depends what I see and how the day unfolds as to what content I can deliver. And then I'll try and sparingly sort of lay the videos out during the week at a time of day that I know that uh, most of my audience are going to be able to watch it because there's no point you getting the notification when you're halfway through your year 10 maths and you've got your, your phone down under the table and you're trying to look like you're concentrating but you're watching Robbie fishing. <laughs> all right, all right folks, so that explains my, uh, my process. I go fishing in the summer months. I go fishing a lot. I go fishing most nights, probably four or five nights a week for Murray Cod. This time of year, that's starting to wind down. With daylight savings ending tomorrow night, that's going to wind down a lot more even again. So that's that. That's that kind of explains my process. Also, I want to take this opportunity to explain to you that things are quietening down now. It's uh, it's April. The water's a lot cooler. The fish are a lot slower. The content will be a lot less. But don't stress because there's still going to be lots of videos. I've got big plans. I've got videos that I've been wanting to film, reviews, certain lure reviews, product reviews, tutorials and stuff. But I've been holding off filming them over the summer months when I've been able to go out fishing and get fishing content. I've been holding off filming those videos so that I can do it in the winter months when I can't get out fishing. So during the summer months, I might have four or five fishing videos a week. This time of year, I'm starting to get to two or three fishing videos and maybe a lure review on something else thrown in. During the winter, there's less videos, but that's when I can do the other stuff, like the, the product reviews and talk about fishing and news stories, whatever comes to mind, anything that pops up pretty much. So over the next five to six months, well, over the next couple of months, the trout fishing is really good at the moment. So I'll be making trout fishing videos. But I've got to travel. I can't just sneak out after work for a couple of hours and go trout fishing. I need time to travel up in the hills to do that. So over the next few months, the actual fishing content is going to taper down. And then once June gets here, it's going to be really slow. 
But when September comes, bang, I'll be uploading heaps of fishing videos again. So just be prepared for a bit of a change over the next couple of months in the sense that there's going to be less fishing and more fishing related until I can get access to more fishing. But there will be fishing because I'm going trout fishing first chance I get and there's still a few carp around and there are still a few fish biting. So for now there's still going to be a few fishing videos. I hope this explains my creative process to you people. Lots of people watching. Now let's have a quick look. I'll spend two or three minutes on the comments then I'll uh, get out of here. Caleb, let them keep up the trout Keep up the trout feeds. Mervyn Hughes, Andrew Fishing, thanks. It is harder than normal. Mervyn Hughes, you always comment. Andrew Fishman is a patron of mine. Fish for carp in the cooler months. G'day, Andrew. Thank you very much for commenting. Michael Talks NRL. Hey, Robbie. Sing Fishing, hello. I love you. They're flashing through so fast. Oh, my God. Murray Dock Fishing was sad about something, but it's disappeared now. Ned's Fishing, you are the best. I love your video. So good. Thank you very much, Ned's Fishing. Cod Gobbler 01. There's Brett, Murray Dock Fishing. Hi, Robbie. G'day, Job. You're an absolute legend, young Job. Fish, fish are gone. George Matthews, come to Central West for cod. Maybe one day I'll get out there, mate. You said my name. <laughs> I couldn't say this. I'm not saying it again because your comments disappeared. Marty Evans. I took a photo of your calendar today, Marty. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, keep an eye out for the, uh, I'm gonna share a photo of the Marty calendar. I have got the most unique calendar in my shed and it's uh it was sent to me by marty evans marty's been a fan of my channel for a long time and he's also a patreon he follows me on patreon so thank you very much marty and i love that calendar thank you very much for that that is just so awesome some of you guys it is absolutely amazing the way you support me james fishing robbie you legend mervyn hughes mervyn fishing you have to be prepared gone gone mervyn hughes this is cool as love it you reckon it's cool i reckon it's cool look at all his attention you know, uh, all things outdoors. Check out this channel, All Things Outdoors. He's a local guy, does awesome kayaking stuff, but I've just said too much good things about him and his comments disappeared. All Things Outdoors in Wangaratti. I want to check him out. He's a great guy. He's got some really cool GoPro tips for kayak fishermen. Unknown Australian. Hey, mate, it's Fletcher. Okay, Fletcher. Uh, uh, uh. Some, something about dad jokes. I went into the uh, Eagle Boys Pizza the other day and I said, they said, what would you like? And I said, Make me a crocodile sandwich and make it snappy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love you, Robbie. Keep it up, mate. No, thank you very much. You guys make so many amazing comments. Carlos Rafino, morning. You're obviously from America. Thank you for watching me from America. I have actually got a lot of you people would be surprised at how many followers that I've got from America. And I absolutely love it. And I actually watch more American videos as a result. I love watching the American videos. There's nothing better on a stinking hot summer's day than laying under the air conditioner in front of a fan with a cold face washer on me forehead and watching an American wade up a trout stream with snow on either side of it. <laughs> it's fascinating, and I just love it. It is awesome. Do I collab with Andy's Fishing? You know what? Andy and I have actually spoken about that in the past, but it's never actually happened. Andy's got a massive channel. If you don't watch Andy's Fishing, you guys ought to check it out. He is just amazing. There's a difference between Andy and I. Andy is a creator. He's much more of a creator, whereas I'm more of a documenter. I document my fishing trips, which means when I go fishing, I pretty much make a little video and I chuck it up so you can see how the fish are biting and what I'm doing and where I'm traveling. Andy, he creates, he has drone footage, he has everything. He is just an amazing editor and an amazing presenter. And I'm a big fan of the Andy Fishing Channel. I haven't got half of the uh, the skill set that he's got as an editor. And if I did, well, my videos wouldn't be as frequent because there'd be more time getting put into them. Ha, right out. I should check out Andy's fishing yard, yes. <laughs> check it out, Andrew. He's up, he's up north. He's a um, uh, he's really cool. I really like his channel. He's a very pleasant natured man. Andy's fishing is buying a big boat soon. I saw something the other day about that. Good on him. The video that I watched the other day, mate, Andy needs a bigger boat. I thought he was going to get capsized. He filled the boat up with water and he remained calm. I, mean, I would have been petrified. Then again, he would probably be petrified waving his camera in the face of a cranky brown snake when I remain calm. <laughs> there once was a boy from Trombosham. He took his eyes out to wash them. His mother said, Jack, if you don't put them back, I'm going to put them on the floor and squash them. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there just because I just, you know, like doing that sort of stuff. Ned's Fishing says, LOL. Jay Sig says, you are so cool. Fly, man. I'm kind of fly. Fly for a white guy. 
<laughs> there once was a man from Leeds. He swallowed a packet of seeds. He grew grass all over his ass and he couldn't see his nuts for weeds. Poor bugger, they mustn't have had Roundup when he ate them seeds. James Lennox. James Lennox. G'day, James. James was inspired by my recent blackfish video. He went out and he caught a blackfish. He only caught one, but I reckon it was bigger than five of the ones that I caught put together. James, I just love having you following my channel. I love following your adventures on Fish Brain. You are a legend. And I've got to give a shout out to another friend of mine too, Bolt Action Productions. If you're a shooter or a hunter, then you want to check out the Bolt Action Productions channel. Because Steve from Bolt Action Productions, he's a bit like Andy's fishing. He's the Andy's fishing of hunting. He is just an incredible cameraman. He loves cameras. Him and I talk on the phone a lot about cameras and camera lenses and stuff. He's a great guy. And he has just had a video that's had 4 million views. And if he hasn't done so, he's due to pass me any day with subscriber count because he is just killing it. If you're a shooter or a fisherman, a shooter or a hunter, check out Bolt Action Productions. A great guy. James Fishing. I've got a TikTok message here. How's it going, Robbie? I'm on TikTok. I'm actually on a lot of different social media platforms. Some work and some don't. For all the yous that message me on Snapchat, I'm sorry if I don't see them or reply. I don't get Snapchat really well. I wish I got it a lot more than what I do. I enjoy Snapchat. It's fun, but I rarely ever look at it. It doesn't really work well for me. TikTok. Well, I've got kids. I've got to be on TikTok. Kids love TikTok. It's a kid thing. And I totally suck at it. I think I've got like one video. So if you see me on TikTok, yeah, you're free to follow me, but you might get much because I'm pretty crap at it. Instagram, I love Instagram. Instagram's my favorite. Instagram's probably, YouTube is probably my favorite platform. But following that, I love Instagram. Being a photographer, I love access to all the wonderful photos from all around the world. It's actually therapeutic to search hashtags on Instagram. You can search hashtags. Say you want to go to Lake Mulwala. You go to hashtag Lake Mulwala. You search the hashtag and you can see all the latest photos that have been coming from Lake Mulwala. I just love it. I actually hashtag Buddhism. The other day it was fascinating what I read. I hashtag black metal. That was quite interesting. I will follow hashtags from just different places around the world and just see what's happening. I'll hashtag some heavy metal stuff. And some of the photos I see of some of my favorite bands that I've never even seen before. I just love Instagram. Instagram is probably my favorite social media platform. YouTube, then Instagram, Facebook, I've got it, I'm, I know how to use it, I do use it a lot, but I, uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a flood weight of negativity, it's, a, it's, I don't know, Instagram's a lot more, it's a much more positive platform than, than Facebook, I think, <laughs> anyway, folks, I better wind this up, I could be here all night, because I've always got so much to talk about, look at all you guys, come to New Zealand, Tekapo Canals, boom time, donkey trout there one of these days I, you know, what sort of camera would you recommend for a beginner on a low budget wanting to start youtube videos snowman 87 mate it all depends on when you say low budget it depends what sort of low budget my favorite is my canon g7x mark ii i just love it i think they're about seven or eight hundred dollars i'm not sure whether that's over your budget or under your budget it's a great camera. It's got a flip-up screen. You can talk to it and vlog to it. It has so many wonderful features. Under that is the G9X Mark II. Excellent camera. Pretty much as good as the G7X, but it doesn't have the flip screen, but it's about two or $300 cheaper. And then you can pick up a G9X Mark II for about four or 500 bucks. And to be quite honest, mate, the GoPro Hero 7 is a great camera for YouTube videos. In fact, a lot of my fishing videos, particularly when there's walking and hiking involved, like my, uh, my cod fishing videos, are all filmed exclusively with my GoPro. I'll hold it up, I'll talk to the GoPro, then I'll go and fish, then I'll hold it up, and do a bit of an exit, and that's about it. A lot of my other videos, at the moment I'm filming with my phone, then there's other times I'm filming, I've got so many cameras, you know, my, my, my G7X Mark II is probably my favourite, and that's one I recommend for anybody starting, but I've got digital SLRs that I use from time to time as well. Depending on your budget, G7X Mark II from Canon, also the GoPro Hero 7, it's a GoPro, but it's a very, very good quality GoPro. It has some fantastic features, and it's actually a great camera for making YouTube videos. But if you want something where you can see yourself, you're probably better off to get the uh, Canon G7X Mark II. Can't beat the 7 Black. I love mine to bits. Sing Fishing. I think you contacted me and asked me my thoughts on that. And it looks like you went out and bought, bought one. I love mine too, mate. Absolutely awesome. TJ's New Life. G'day, mate. G'day, Gaz. I hope you're battling well, mate. You're a bloody legend. I, uh, 
Yeah, I really like you, Gary. You're a great guy. Stevie B. G'day from Scotland, Robbie. Stevie B. Watching me from Scotland. Mate, I've got so much Scottish in my heart. My great-grandmother, her name was Violet Hayes. Violet Hayes Armstrong. Then she became an Alexander. She is the most beautiful lady you've ever met in your life. Born in Edinburgh, Scotland. Came over to Australia in the early 1900s. Passed away in about 1990, I think it was. Loved her to death. The most beautiful lady you'd ever meet. I love Scotland. And I often think if I could just run away from home when no one could find me, Scotland would be the first place that I would run to because I'd love to see the castles, see my family heritage, see where my great-grandparents come from. Thank you for watching me from Scotland. That makes my day. Can you make a fishing video at Lake Nianga? Fill it and reel it, mate. If I get over to Bendigo with time to fish, I will. Actually, last week I was in Bendigo for the opening of the Tackles Trolley World. Tackles Trolley World. We'll edit that bit out. Actually, last week I was over in Bendigo for the Trolleys Tackle World opening. And a few people said, did you get a chance to go fishing at Lake Neanger? I didn't get a chance to go fishing anywhere. What I'd done, I knocked off. I'd done a sleepover at work. So I worked from 3 o'clock Friday to 9 o'clock Saturday. Came home, jumped in the car straight to Bendigo with my wife and kids. Then we hung around trolleys until four o'clock. After four o'clock, I met with half a dozen of those wonderful people that follow me on Patreon. And we had a private uh, afternoon tea. And then I left there around about six o'clock, 6.30, came straight home. No time for socialising, no time for fishing. But one of these days, I will fish late in the anger, mate. It sounds like a wonderful place. Righto, folks. Are you worried about my data? Because I am. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I've got to cut you off now. So many messages coming through. I could be here all night. Thank you very much to uh, everybody that's participated in this fantastic live stream. I do apologize to the many, many people that I haven't had a chance to reply to or read your comments out. They are literally going bing, 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 bing. They are literally Fisherman's Office. There's a cool channel you want to check out, folks. Fisherman's Office. He caught a bike fish probably 40 centimeters long or more he took his spinner or lure when it was on the surface it was like pff, a blackfish surface strike fisherman's office check it out bye murray rock fishing bye everyone i'm going to do this again i want to try and do more live streams during the uh the winter months when there's not as much fishing to be had so keep your eye out for that and i'm going to try and get to your comments as best as i can i'm sorry to everybody that missed out take care folks i'll see you in the next video i think i pushed this little cross up here to stop this didn't seem to work. What about that one? Are you sure that you want to stop streaming? Yeah. Take care now. Bye-bye then. <laughs> Little boy on the dock with a pocket full of crap.